final application of our test. So, so here we can uh, store the uh, record of our execution and, and if we want, we can generate the report from here. So first I'll uh, talk about exhibition list, this folder, and uh, what is the purpose of other uh, elements present here in this section, I'll tell you later. So here under this execution list folder, we will be executing. Normally we would do all the execution under this execution list folder. So. So if you see under execution list folder, we can create the execution list under which we can have as much as test case we want to have. So I can right click on the execution list folder and I can create one execution list under which uh, I can add the uh, I can add the uh, test cases. For example, uh, um, login and registration. I have created one execution list. Okay, login. I created one execution list with login. So under this, I can add the test cases which are regarding, which are related to this login. So for that, I can drag and drop the test case to that. Or another way is directly dragging and dropping over the execution list folder will create the execution list automatically. When I drop, when I drag and drop any test case over it, it will, the new execution list will be created automatically. So I can rename it now. And I can add some more test cases also under this execution list. And I can uh, execute. Then uh, another thing is I can drag and drop as the folder, as the test case folder, I can drag and drop it to the um, execution section. Um, okay, I'll drop it over login. So it will be added like this. All the test cases under the folder will be added to that execution list. So you can drag and drop as test case or you can drag and drop as test case folder. And um, one advantage why you drag and drop as folder is, so for example, here I have dragged and dropped as folder price comparison. So, yeah, we are we were executing in scratch book. So we will be executing directly in this place. So that is for temporary purpose. Okay. Like in order to check if that uh, test cases we are creating is working fine or not. Yeah, we'll drag and drop. So uh, in the execution, it's kind of final execution. If you're done with all the test cases, you will be doing the final execution in the execution section. Okay. So before that, uh, once you create one, yeah, now test type or test case, in order to verify the test case you have created is working well. And not even the test case, sometimes you will be doing some logical thing, right? Like in uh, right entering some mathematical expression or uh, doing some uh, logical thing. So that time, anyway, you would be needed to run the test case first, whether if that logical thing is working fine or not. 
So normal test case also you don't need to do uh, run it in scratch bro. While you are um, working fine with Tosca that time. But initial stage in order to uh, get to know the test case is working fine or not, you will be running it in scratch book. So after doing that, the final execution will be like all the test cases will be, uh, you will be running right for the one time. So that final execution will be in execution function. But the thing is in scratch book, we will not get any log of your uh, execution. But in execution se section, you, you can store up your execution log. Okay. Okay, so we can drag and drop a test case and folder. So while draw, dragging and dropping a folder, the one advantage is, so I have dragged and dropped the price comparison folder. And now I'm making some, I'm, make, I'm creating one test case within that folder. Okay, I just created one test case. So in that time, what I can do is I can right click and use the option synchronize. So it will be added automatically here. So while I'm dragging and dropping this folder. Um, so if you are making any changes within within the test case, uh, you don't need to do anything. And the changes will be automatically reflected here in the execution section but if you are doing any changes at folder level make sure you are doing the synchronized thing or you can you, you should manually drag and drop or use the synchronize option um, what next okay so th these are the things uh, we, 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 we will we have to do while adding the test cases from test test case section to execution section. And after adding, um, you can see we will see all this thing. So after executing, um, we can capture all this detail. Uh, what is the value present in the step value, action mode, log info, if it is passed or failed, start time, and how much time it takes. So all these details we will get in the execution section. If any uh, detail about that particular test case will be captured after execution. So uh, in order to execute here, the same thing, um, you can use F6, shortcut F6 or this run option. And we have two options under this run. So you can directly click on this run or under this drop down, we have two options run from here, which means uh, you have executed of the way in uh, test case, of the way in folder. So uh, in execution list, you have executed of the way. So that time you can use run from here. So it will not run from the starting. And run as manual test case test case means so you, you have to click on this run as manual test case and all the test steps with the, for this comparing price for value for blue jeans will be uh, you will be doing like manually you will be doing and finally it will ask you if it is passed or failed and you have to select the option if it is passed or failed you have to manually do it. So that is uh, that is the option. So run from here means it, it will be automatically run from the test case where, where which you have selected. And run as manual test case means uh, you have to do the test case manually and you have to give the rip, uh, log about, uh, about the test case uh, that you have done. And status result means so um, sometimes uh, the test case is uh, correct only the uh, test case would be correct 
uh, but in, due to something, uh, it, it may get way due to some intermittent issue or something, you would be getting it as failed. So that time, if you want to change the result to past, you can change it to past. And it will ask you the command. So here you can enter the command about why you are changing it to past. So I am giving like intermittent error. So we can manually set the result for any test case. But if you want to change it to failed, or you can change, or uh, if you want to change it to no result, you can change and you can give the uh, you can give the command and in log info it will be coming like manually set to past or manually set to fail or manually set to no result. And if you have entered the command, it will be coming under this. If you have not entered any comment, it will be blank. And what mm, Yeah. Okay. So once you are execute, once you are done with the execution. So we can generate the report from here in the execution section. So I'll tell you about that. So now we are generating the login execution list. Okay. So we're generating the report for this login. So just right click on the execution list. And you can see print report option. So Okay, I'm getting to Okay, um, um, I guess the options are duplicate. Okay, so uh, there will be four options. So here the options are duplicated for me. I'm not sure I'm getting this for first time. Okay, so here if you are Okay, fine. I'll check it later. I guess for you it will be correct. The four options only will be visible. Okay, so um, we will have three, four options. So first one is execution entries with actual log. So actual log in the sense. So here you can see one one element called actual log. So here you will get the log info of how many test cases passed and how many test cases failed. So in that uh, report, if you are generating using this option, execution entries with actual log. So in that report, you will get all the uh, test, all the count of test cases which are passed and failed. Um, and execution entries with actual log and issues mean so along with the actual log you will get the issues also if any of the test cases is failed and the issue for that test case will be added to this report if I, if I'm generating using this option and execution entries with detailed log means all the not only the log info not only the how many test cases passed and failed, 
along with that i'll be getting all the details like uh, each and every test step values will be present there uh, all the details will be coming up in the detailed log and execution list with archive logs and actual logs so archive log means so you can see here i'm getting one option archive actual execution log so if i'm using that this actual log will be archived um and so if i'm using this option execution list with archive logs and actual logs so that archived logs also will be coming up for other things if uh, if i have archived the log uh, it will be it will not be coming up but for this option archive logs and actual logs all the archived logs info also will be captured in the report so that these are the different options available when we are trying to print the report one minute So um, now I'll be showing your okay. Mm. I'll make one. Okay. So here we have one test case passed and one test case failed. So I'll generate for this execution list mm, okay normally i prefer to uh, go with detail log so based on your necessary you can generate the report so if i'm using this execution entry with actual log yeah it's loading actually the report is being generated i guess So now I got the window print options. So if you want any hard copy and if you have the printer, you can select change the option. So here I'm going to generate the report in PDF format. So pages all. So I'm giving start option. So here it can give the names of the report and wherever you want to store it up, you can select the folder. So uh, Enter the name as actual log and I'm giving save. Okay, it will be open. So it is the report we generated now. I'll show you.
So it's showing the execution summary. So total test cases and how many passed and how many failed. And a chart for that. So this is. Yeah, here in the here it's showing like which test case failed. So under the um, under the T case. In the detail about the failed test case also has been captured. And I'll show you the detailed report which I cap which I downloaded already. How uh, it would look and okay. So the detailed report if you are generating, it will have the actual log rip. It will all have the details which actual log does have. And it will have each and every test exit. No matter if it is passed or failed, all the test values will be present here in the detailed log report. All the details will be here. So how much time it wait? It waited. Everything will be captured in the detailed log report. Notice. So any question till now? This is detailed report and this is now we generated actual report. So in here we will see only um, the actual log, how many passed and how many first trained. Okay. And for each test case, we have the details about that. Like the, for, for the failed one, it has been showing the error. What is the error uh, it got while running? Okay. Mm, here for past one also, it's showing up. It's saying the details about the this configuration parameter. So if you see, mm, here you can see log info, right? So that is what it's it's showing up here in the report. So uh, in the report which we are uh, generating using actual log, only these details will be captured. In detailed report, you can see all the test step values also present. Each and every steps where we are clicking, whatever input we are giving, all the details will be coming up. Okay. Mm, what else? Okay. So this is how we'll be doing the execution in execution section only. So apart from this execution list folder, we have some other elements here. So I'll tell you about what or I'm not getting come again. One second. Yeah. 
I guess we have that option. Mm, but I'm not sure if it is work, will be working. Okay, I'll check and I'll tell you. I guess I, I, there is an option, but in trial version, I guess it could not work. Yet. I'll tell you tomorrow. Next okay. question. Mm. Okay. Then exploratory testing thing. So in this element, what we can do is we can schedule a call with your team members. So with our team members, we can schedule a call uh, testing team members. And in the call, we will be doing the exploratory testing. So exploratory testing, I guess you know already, right? So we would do some extra research in the scenario in particular functionality we will be doing extra testing extra scenario we will be trying to cover that so we will have the meeting with our test, test team members and we'll be trying to do some exploratory test scenarios testing the exploratory test scenario in that call and at the end of the call you will be getting the a report of that whatever you have done. Um, you will you, you can import some result and at the end of the call. So that's the purpose of this sector. One minute from so uh, so basically we will have some meeting or a meeting scheduled using this create object thing and we'll be doing the exploratory testing along with the team members and at the end of the meeting you'll get, you'll get the result of that meeting so that is the thing and interactive testing means so again you, you will do the interactive testing which means you will add the call with your team members and you will segregate, you will divide the test cases from one project uh, among your team members and you people will be uh, doing the execution on that call. So in the same call, you will be executing the testing along with your team members. So that is interactive testing. And test events and configuration. So this configurations thing is related to this test events. So test events means, so here in uh, Tosca, uh, there is one functionality called distribution text, distributed text, test execution, which means, so if you are working in multiple, sorry, multi-user environment. So if you are working in multi-user environment, so that time you will have access to uh, all the projects in the uh, repository, right? So if you are working in the multi-user environment, so that time we can use that functionality distributed test execution, which means at the same time, uh, you can execute the created test cases uh, in the um, desktop of your team members. So at the same time, you can uh, execute the uh, test cases, execute the project that you that you have created from your team members desktop. So that is the functionality of uh, yeah. Tosca distributed execution uh, test execution. In short form, they would call it as DTE. So that time, if you are working with DTE, so that time the test events. So in which system, the which test cases should be run. And all those things will be created under test events and you will start running the test case. So at the same time, different test cases will be executed in the different system. So that is one functionality you can explore if you are working in the multi-user environment. So these are the different elements apart from execution list are present, so which are additional thing. And normally we would execute in the execution list. 
Okay. Okay. So then we'll move to requirement section. Okay, so requirement section uh, is mainly, uh, you know, helpful for us to track the to track the testing uh, testing progress. So whatever we have uh, we have um, we have done till now, whatever we have to do it. So all those things will be tracked. So tracked in the requirement section. So normally it would be more like the manual, uh, uh, whatever we have done, will be doing in the manual testing also. So there also we will have one requirement thing, uh, maybe in Excel sheet or some other tool, you will have the requirement, all the requirements which are related to that application, right? So same like that. With some extra functionality, we will have that requirements. So we'll start. Um, so under requirements, this is the root folder. So under that, we can create the folder if we want. So I'm giving the name of it as login and registration. So I have created one folder with login and registration. So these uh, folders, right? So uh, it will be arranged automatically in alphabetical orders. It will be arranged automatically in al alphabetical orders. So if you are, if you want it to be in some order, um, you just enter, you just enter some number, numerical values before that folder while creating. Otherwise, it will be automatically arranged into alphabetical array. So for now, I have not entered any numbers. So, so we have created one folder. Under that folder, we can create the requirement set. So this is the requirement set. So requirement set means under this requirement set, we can have the uh, all the requirements which are related to this particular requirement set. So requirement set, we can uh, define it as uh, different functionality that are, that, uh, that are present in our application. So for example, we are focusing on login and registration. So um, I can create one requirement set for login. So login is a separate functionality of the application, demo workshop application, right? So I've created one requirement set for login. And I can create one requirement set for registration. So registra registering for new user is another functionality of demo workshop. So I can create the one requirement set for registration. And now, this is, these are requirement sets. So under this requirement sets, I can have all the requirements which are related to that particular functionality. So for login, we will have so, uh, other requirements like logging in with valid users, logging in with invalid users. So all those are different test cases or different requirements which we will be testing uh, for that application, right? So all those requirements we can add under this requirement set login. So under this requirement set, I can create the requirement again by right clicking and selecting the create requirement. So for example, I have one requirement like logging in with logging in with valid user credential and another requirement like logging in with 
invalid. So under invalid, we will have other scenarios also. What is Change it. User. Very So now I have added three requirements. So for registration, I will be adding some two. Registering for new user. Registering for existing user. So in this way, we can create the requirements for the requirement set. So for each requirement, so in the right side, if you see, uh, we can give the description, which means so if you want to add some more comment about the particular requirement. Um, for example, sometimes we will have all the steps about the particular requirement, right? So you can add any if any have, if you have any extra comment, so you can have under the description. So you can add anything. So then we have some other elements here. So I'll tell you one by one. So the first one is frequency class. So frequency class means so um, we will be giving the uh, so um, frequency class and damage class both are user defined so we will be giving the value to them so frequency class means so out of 10 we can give the value uh, so the range may come from 2 to uh, 2 to 10 sorry, 1 to 10. So 1 to 10, we can give any value. Um, so frequency class means it's based on how frequent you are going to use that particular requirement. So based on the, uh, based on how frequent you are going to uh, use that requirement, you can enter the frequency class out of 10. Or uh, I can enter the value of top 10. So, or if you are limiting it to 1 to 5. So, if one, if like um, the maximum limit is 1 to 10. So, if you want to enter out of 5 and enter the values out of 5, you can enter the values out of 5 for all the requirements which are under this project. So if you want to enter the value out of 10, you can enter the value out of 10 for all the projects. But if you are entering out of 5, you have to enter the value uh, out of 5 for all the requirements which are present in this project. So if you are entering uh, out uh, the value out of 5 for some requirement, and if you are entering uh, the value out of 10 for some requirement, that would be some miscalculation. So if you are entering, uh, setting the limit as okay i'll be entering out of five you just enter the value for uh, out of five for all the requirements which are present in this project so you can set it as five or ten because ten means if will, the values will be very big so five means it will be very less so anyway either way we can go with anything so for now i'm entering out of five okay out of ten also we can enter so the maximum thing is 10. 
so frequency class for this particular requirement logging in the valid user credential so so most of the times i guess we will be using that so i'm giving the value as out of 5 um, i'm giving like 4 and damage class so damage class means uh, if that particular requirement is getting failed how how much it's going to affect the financial risk of the client so based on uh, how much it's going to affect the finance finance of the client we will be entering the damage class so for example if this particular requirement is getting failed how how much it would cost cost the client so so uh, if we are not able to log in so we will not be able to check it or anything so it will it will be like the show stopper right so maybe the, the, the damage for this um for this requirement is i i guess so we can give give the value like again four or something so based on how it's going to affect the financial a finance of the client when it is failed when if this requirement is not working we will be entering the da damage class so in this way we will be entering the value for frequency class and damage class so you can see weight and con contribution percentage will be auto calculated based on the frequency class and damage class we are entering here so the formula for weight is 2 power uh, addition of frequency class and damage class. So 2 power 8. So where the weight is 256. Here. So the uh, contribution is calculated based on how it will be calculated. Is It will, okay, I'll be entering the value for these three test cases and I'll go to the contribution percentage. So that next test case is logging in with invalid username and valid password. So I guess frequency is very less. We will not be, I guess only one time we will be doing the test. So I'm entering the frequency class as low, which is one and damage class. So if the invalid uh, username and valid password, if it is, if it do some damage, I guess it's also affect the it, it will also affect the um affect the client in some level so i'm giving like three for this and frequency class for valid username and invalid again it's like a very low frequency and damage class will be um Maybe valid username as it is valid username. Maybe it's like um, not much. Okay. I will be giving damage classes too. So we have given frequency class and damage class values. And weight has, uh, it has been calculated 2 power 3, 8, 2 power 4, 16. And contribution. So contribution will be calculated based on um, weight divided by total weight. Total weight in the sense 256 plus 16 plus 8 total weight. Weight divided by total weight in hundred percent. So that will be the formula for contribution percentage. So each has been uh, calculated with the weight and contribution percentage. So this is what we have to do in the requirement section. So cover X specified and execution state. So these two columns will be uh, calculated after we are linking the test case and the execution list to the requirement section. So we have the option to link our test case with the requirement and the execution list to the requirement we have the option here so based on that these two columns will be calculated mm. 
okay coverage specific so cover i'll tell you what to call about two columns so tomorrow we will see about how to link the test case and execution set, uh, set to the requirement so coverage specified means um so after linking the test case so it, it will show up the percentage of how much we have covered so how much we have uh, so how how much we have covered uh, re related to that requirement so in test case in test case section how much we have covered in related to the requirement section so for this requirement how much test case creation how much progress for this particular test case uh, for particular requirement has been done so that will be captured in coverage specified and execution state means so um how much has been passed or how much has been failed how much has it to be executed all those details will be captured in the execution sorry execution state column so th this is related to test case coverage and this is related to execution state so tomorrow i'll tell you about how to link the test case to the requirement section and execution set to the requirement section and after linking how we can track the details from the uh, from the linked uh, linked elements okay any questions from frequency class damage class for for these four details uh no okay so actually it's automatically calculated for me as i have say, uh, changed some settings here uh, settings in my project otherwise you have to manually change it so in, uh, i'll show you that option here so, uh, so if you go to settings So normally, by default, you have to. Uh, there will be an option where you have to right click and you have to select the option start calculation something. So in order to do the calculation automatically, we have to change the settings. So I'll show you show you that. I am about 15 minutes left. Okay. So this is the settings window. So I'm searching for. Commander general. Okay. So under commander folder general advanced. So you can see auto calculate requirement. So I've set it as on. So by default it will be off. So if you want to change, you can change. So I, you just search for calculate and it will be coming this option. So you can change it to uh, on. So if you want to automatically calculate the uh, weight and contribution. So otherwise you can see update values. So you have to click on this manually every time you make some change in frequency class and damage class.